بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم so now in this section we'll start with something called cisco dna center where we'll try to understand a basic overview of the cisco dna center what exactly it does and what is the actual job of the cisco dna center and then we'll try to get into some other details like the appliance uh, probably or what is appliance and the specifications and what are the things we can do we'll try to get into overview of the different kind of jobs with the cisco dna center you can uh, go with like managing the network um, plenty of things so devnet certification is something i'll i'll try to talk in this section uh, probably just wanted to you know some some options relating to devnet and the devnet sandbox where you can simulate or where you can log in and you can practice the labs for cisco dna center and then finally i'll we'll try to get into some other options like cisco dna center components like the the actual components inside and what exactly they do so let's get started here so cisco dna center dna stands for digital network architecture that's what dna and the dna center we call it as so it is simply as an appliance so it's an appliance provided by cisco and this appliance is going to provide you multiple things like provide a centralized graphical interface now so what is graphical interface again if you want to manage your devices like these are your network devices and i want to manage them uh, remotely or monitor them there are plenty of things we can do we'll go a little bit next so probably what we are going to do is we are going to manage from the dna center here so probably it's an appliance as i said and this appliance is going to provide you the graphical interface uh, uh, using graphical interface you can you can do plenty of things so we can say this is like a new approach to manage your devices you can manage you can configure you can troubleshoot the devices from a single pane so single pane of glass we call it as a single place you can say so the devices can be like routers switches or any specific servers um, probably your firewalls it can be anything now we call it as centralized now why we call it as centralized and how it is going to be different because if you go back if you know some of the older ways to manage your devices we can go with the cli where i can log into the command line of each and every device and i can do some basic changes like you can you can do console you can do ssh you have telnet options so that is like one method you manage your device you log into the device from there and also you have a separate snmp server in your network like somewhere you can say this is your network you have a something like dedicated snmp server and this snmp server is responsible for monitoring your network and also to some extent you can push some configurations we have seen that in the snmp topics and then we have other other ways like you have something called cisco network assistant that's a kind of gui interface to manage your switches probably a separate and first and for routers also cisco introduced something called ccp uh, cisco configuration professional for managing the gui for the routers so it's a separate gui for the routers and then you have a separate uh, gui for something like asdm for for asa firewalls and, and those devices like every every product or every device have their own way you manage so if that particular device supports graphical you have a separate software or a separate option which is generally used to manage there are plenty like even uh, earlier we have something called cisco prime infrastructure we, you can say this is like an older version of the cisco dna like cisco dna replaces the cisco prime infrastructure now so there are different options to manage so but the but the main issue is these are like more like a separate gui interfaces so you log in to the device separately you log in and access separately so there's no relation mostly so you cannot go and say i'll go to the cisco network assistant where where i'm going to manage the switches i can still log into the router or the asa it's not like that so which means you will be using a separate gui and a separate uh, software or separate option to manage each and every device whether it is a command line or whether it is a graphical interface now probably with cisco dna what we are doing going to do is so these all are centralized at one place so that's what the meaning of centralized here 
Now, when I say centralized means, now if you want to manage your router, probably you can still do that from the DNA. You can initiate a telnet session uh, via command line, or you can also uh, get into the GUI. Means you can means you can manage via GUI. You can push the configurations from the GUI interface itself. Means you don't need to have a separate GUI interface. Of course, the routers may not, but still you can push the configurations more in a GUI format. But at the end, like templates, we'll create some templates in a GUI, and these templates are going to be executed in the form of CLI, just like you type in the commands. So that's what again the programming interface. So it's going to provide you. Uh, something called a programming interface where you can build some kind of templates and those templates can be deployed back on the devices in the form of just like a normal CLI commands. Okay, so there are plenty of things it will do. That's what uh, basic overview of the DNA, what exactly it will do. And with DNA, you can do a lot of things. So I'm going to just give a basic options here, but probably in the next uh, presentations I'll be covering a little bit more detail with a graphical interface. I'll show you a little bit options later on. Like these are all the things we do in our production network. The same thing we are going to do. We design the network. Now with DNS Center, we can design it via GUI. We can add specific. Uh, we can actually see the physical topology, how it looks, and then uh, we can also see the maps depending upon the locations, like. Let's say you have a one side in US and in that inside the US again, you have one side in California, probably one side in a different location. I'll just give the names as ABC. So probably you can see the map of those devices. So I'll show you the interface as well in the later on. But here, as I said, I don't want to jump into the uh, that part right now. So that will we'll just cover the basic overview here. And in that map, again, we can build a topology like we can build a site or area, we call it as. In that site, we can add uh, specific uh, areas or, or buildings. We can add building one and then building two, building three. And in that building, again, we can have a logical separation of the floors like that. So it's like more like a graphical view. And in that floor, you can have a four plan. So there are different options. And we can drag and drop the devices. Uh, probably from one side to another side. Let's say you want to move a specific devices. Of course, physically you have to move the devices, but later on you can you can also uh, push the configurations directly onto the site. Like the common configurations, when you apply to the site, it will automatically apply to all the devices. Uh, also, there you can allocate the IP addresses from here to specific devices. We call it as IP address allocations, and there are different options you can configure from here. Now, apart from that, you can also add the devices. Now, adding the devices includes, uh, like there is an option called uh, discovery option. Now, with the help of discovery option, now this DNS center can go and uh, use a different options like CDP or we can also define an IP range option. So where it is going to discover all the devices and automatically all the discovered devices will be added in some, some list called inventory. And from there, you can actually see all the, you can actually figure out all the devices present in your network. Of course, there should be some kind of reachability or the prerequisite for that. And probably once the devices are listed in the inventory, now you can uh, designate these devices to specific sites or in a specific floor, you can deploy an access point and see the range in a graphical interface, how far that access point is going to cover, depending upon the model, depending upon the type of the antenna it uses. You can also configure, uh, customize the settings like you can configure the DHCP settings, triplet settings, or DNS server settings, and you can deploy this to all the devices. Means you don't need to go to each and every device to do that. Whatever the settings you apply on the DNS center, you can push those things into the, uh, to the individual devices on that particular site or to all the sites like global settings. Options are there. So you can devise from a single place. You can uh, you can design from a single place, and you can add and configure the devices. You can monitor the devices. Now monitoring is more like in the job of SNMP, kind of SNMP as well. So probably with the DNS center, it is going to show you the graphical interface, the GUI display of your devices, of your topology, how it looks, and 
all the applications whatever the applications you are uh, you're using and also the health status of those devices and all the devices you have all this information on a single click you just click on the device you get all the device information from a single plane means you don't need to go to each and every device to monitor like even if you want to say let's say i want to see the cpu utilization of this device now you don't need to go there you just need to select the device and then issue the command here like show process cpu and it's going to uh, send that cli commands to the device and get the output displayed here where you don't need to log in to the router so it's like normally if you want to monitor the cpu utilization you need you need to go and execute the command over there or you need some kind of uh, snmp software running in your network to get the information so we have those options inbuilt here of course you can do troubleshooting as well from this single place now troubleshooting wise uh, with the dns center it is going to display all the information in the graphs like the the utilization or the link status those kind of information which are easy to read and also as i said it is going to show you the health status of the devices and with the help of the these options we can identify the specific patterns or specific problems can be identified and if 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 they identify any problem in this gns center is going to provide you some kind of possible solutions just like whenever you have some issue with the network interface card you just click on that then probably you have some kind of diagnostic option similar way you can you can get here now just like this let's say if i have some issue with here so you have an option of diagnose in the windows where it is going to detect the possible problems or so similar way you have some kind of uh, this dns software is going to uh, get some details and based on the details it is going to provide you the possible solutions the same way what you see here okay so this is one more thing you can troubleshoot your networks and it's going to show the options like whether the pro let's say simple example if you take a pc here and this pc is the user is experiencing some connectivity issues not able to access some resources now the dns center is going to collect the statistics like check the interface connection or check the dscp ip address whether it gets or not check whether the dscp server is reachable or not like that it is going to collect some statistics and it's going to display with some options and with those options uh, we can easily figure out that okay let's let's check this let's try this something like that so these are specific options and one more thing i can add like the dns center supports something called path trace option and with the help of path trace option let's say let's say you got your network something like this and the user the pc1 sitting here is unable to access the server on the other side and what you can do is you can visualize the packet flow which means when the packet is going from here and here to reach so instead of sending a packet the dns center is going to visualize as if you are sending a packet and it's going to uh, go through the uh, network and then it is going to check where exactly it is going to stop and what might be the possible problem over there like maybe the acl issue or the routing issue it can be anything right so probably it can visualize and give you the exact point or the place where might be the problem and also can provide you the possible solutions to fix that problem so it's more like uh, troubleshooting your network with with all the possible options and it can automatically uh, fix some issues depending upon how you uh, configure the things you can also say that okay if this problem comes you you automatically go and, and execute this or run this command or do this particular task so that can also be automated based on the programming interface and then finally you can also configure some specific policies now these access policies are are like exactly what you want or how your network to behave now in simple words we can say it allows you to build some kind of virtual networks just like virtual lan you have a separate lan separation similar way we can build some virtual networks and within that virtual network let's say i don't want a uh, some traffic should be denied 
or some traffic should be permitted more like an ACL job we can configure some kind of policies and these policies is going to define what traffic will be allowed between between the virtual networks or within the virtual networks so we can say it's going to control the access within your network or between the networks like you can also say something like the security policy uh, which is going to define what traffic is allowed apart from that we can also configure some kind of quality of service policies where you can prioritize specific traffic like vip traffic should get this much of bandwidth uh, there should not be any delay something like that you can also configure some quality of service policies as well so in short these are the things we can do with the dns center probably in the in the next sections i'll be covering a little bit uh, more like what are the options and how you log into the dns center and what are the different options and where exactly you do these things